There are two ways for a place to become infested by spirits. Violent acts, like the commission of a murder, or invitation, like using a Ouija board. But if you hadn't done either, how would you explain loud banging in the walls, the squealing of pigs, and violent attacks by invisible forces? Is it a family-wide hoax, or is something more sinister to blame? This week's episode is The Smurl Family Haunting. In the night, your heart fills with dread. Probably a murderer who wants you dead. It could be a ghost, a demon, or worse. Perhaps you're the victim of a witch's curse. It's hopeless, you're doomed. You'd call a priest if you could. You'd rather just listen to who? Sinister who? tell you how you explain squealing of pigs <laughs> i was gonna say come over to my house <laughs> I was gonna say, the priest says that p- the sound of pig hoofs indicates a demon is infesting your house i'm not gonna say that that's wrong <laughs> i feel like my home has been possessed by a demon <laughs> since we've well, got pedal <laughs> i will say at least you know if you heard pig hooves in your house, you're like, oh, it's Petal. But, <laughs> yeah. if, but if Petal was, like, cuddled next to you on the couch and then you heard pig hooves, yeah, I'd be... you're like, did you invite somebody over without yeah. telling us? Oh, Petal? and then that would be kind of cute, though, if, like, one of her pig friends just walked in hey, and was like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> oh, she's never played with another pig. Well, I mean, she was born to a litter of pigs, so she lived How with old them. is she? She will be three, November 16th. So she... Well, first of all, I'm very happy that you know your pig's birthday. <laughs> I do. What kind of pig we mom would had, you be without? We had a baby shower for her. Did you really? Yeah. Laurie. Didn't know that. One of my best friends, Laurie, for those of you that don't know her. Um, Shout out to Laurie because I love her Instagram she's stories. She's great. I talk she, about them all the time. She threw Petal a baby shower. That is such a good friend. She made these adorable cupcakes that look like pigs. Um, it was you're eating pigs at a pig shower. Yeah. Well, Yeah. Yeah, She's but like, make bacon we didn't have any, yeah, I don't think we had, we did have, there may have been some meat, but definitely no pork. I think that that was even said. <laughs> Please um, don't bring pigs in a blanket. But she wore a little tutu, not the pig, not Laurie, um, and everyone <laughs> brought her gifts and we opened them. <laughs> you had a pig baby shower. Yeah. Oh my Yeah, goodness. we sent out invitations and everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. So she'll be three in November. Um she hasn't seen another pig since her birth. No, it seems mean. I know, I know. Did you? I read a thing that said elephants look at mm-hmm. humans as if they like when we look at a puppy, we're like, oh my god, look at them, they're oh, so what? cute. I wonder if Petal feels like that when she sees humans. Mm, I don't think so. Or she's like disdain. I think she's like <laughs> These oh Jesus bastards. Christ. Yeah, <laughs> still here. She likes us, but pigs are interesting. We've had to like learn everything about them. They're not like dogs. They're not like cats. They're like. I mean, they're a, they're totally own thing. But she she ate out of my hand when I was over yeah, there. Yeah, really she's cool. very food motivated, which I get. I heard that. Yeah, so she'll only do things for food. Um, but they, I think she Tommy one day wants to have another one. I, I mean, his dream is to like have a farm, have a pig sanctuary. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, like if we had a lot of land and then could just, I say, open it up to all animals, not just pigs. yeah. So it would be like. An animal sanctuary, but I think um, pigs like having another pig around. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, it's, it's like, like a person. It's like, do you want to live in a just with a bunch of pigs and not have another person around? No, it would be awful. But yeah. that sounds like an episode of the Twilight Zone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, one of the scariest Twilight with Zones. The face was when she that wakes up lady. and the and the pigs have been operating on her. It's like a pig man, and she's a hot oh, lady. It's Jesus. like the opposite of the Seinfeld episode. Yep. What is it, that name? I can't think of the name of that episode. But, but yeah, it's like the famous one where it's like that hot lady, and then uh, they're like, oh, gross, look at her. Mm-hmm. She's so deformed. Versus the Seinfeld episode where Kramer is very convinced that he saw a pig man. <laughs> and then he's like, I want to save him. I want to save him. And they're like, is it a pig man? He goes, he was just a fat little mental patient. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's one of my favorite Seinfelds. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, well... Listen, sometimes you're going to hear pig hooves in your house and it's not a good thing. No, sometimes it means you got a demon infestation. Well, can I just say this story, I found this book. It's called The Eye of the Beholder, by the way, the Twilight Zone pig face episode. That's it, yeah. Uh, This story that we're going to cover today is when I was 18, Mm -hmm. I got this book at 
Paperbacks Plus in Mesquite, which is a musty old bookstore in downtown Mesquite. Is that still around? I believe it still is. Wow. Shout out to Good for them. Paperbacks Plus. And it's called The Haunted. Mm-hmm. By and Robert McKenna. By is Isn't it, that it? No, I don't I'm not sure who wrote it. Um but he did I don't think Robert McKenna wrote it. I'll check it. I'll check. Anyway. Well, oh, no, I'm wrong. That's the priest. That's the priest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's called The Haunted, and it's co-written by Ed and Lorraine Warren and co-written by Jack and Janet Swirl. Robert Curian wrote That's it. it. That's yeah. why you said Robert. Uh, so Robert Curian, Ed Warren, uh, and Jack and Janet Swirl, uh, Smurl wrote it. And it's, I remember getting this book, and it was a big hardback book, and I was at my high school boyfriend's house, and he was playing video games, and I cracked open this book, and I started reading, and I could not stop because I couldn't go to sleep because I was terrified i read this book cover to cover in one sitting wow. and it, the audiobook is like six and a half hours long so i mean i must have i don't know that i read at the speed of voice so yeah. but even so if i started at 11 p.m i remember i didn't go to bed until dawn wow. and this was in the haunted ex-boyfriend's house by the way the house that was haunted Were you spending the night over there yeah always Ooh. we did a lot but his little brother was in the room, so it was no no hanky panky <laughs> until the little brother would go and get scared and go sleep with the parents, and then it was uh, then it was game then it was over. on <laughs> it was game on yeah. Um, but yeah, he was playing video games, and I was reading this book, and I could not sleep because it was so terrifying to me. And now I'm more grown up, and I listen to the Audible audiobook because it's just faster than reading. Yeah, and it's still scary, mm-hmm. but. Now it's, like, so different being a grown-up and reading it versus being 17 and reading it. Yeah. It's weird how something that... It's like when you're a grown-up and then you go back to visit, like, your childhood home and you're like, oh, I remember this. It was so much bigger when I... I'm still terrified to go around corners in my childhood home because my sister always hid behind him and screamed at me. So I'm always... Does your mom live in the home lives, you yeah. grew up in? Oh, That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So I think, you know, I think, man, I, was, I remember I was so scared of this and now... But I do think about going back and rewatching the Leprechaun movie, but I'm pretty sure it's just as scary. <laughs> I think it'll still hold up. But what if it isn't? Maybe you've maybe you've no, turned I a can't. corner, not in your childhood home. No, because my bitch sister's <laughs> waiting for me to scream. My, my coworker, I'm a, a fancy corporate lawyer, and I was in my office typing on a document, and my favorite coworker that I always reference, well, I like kind of whipped around the corner to my room, and I was just like, ah! <laughs> Just screamed at him, and he was like, "It's like when you're in the Jack in the Box parking lot, yeah. and somebody shows up at your <laughs> window." My first reaction is just to scream, and he yeah. goes, "Okay, uh, <laughs> you just screamed at me," and I was like, "Well, you whipped in my office, so to be fair." He goes, "Do you just scream at people when they come up on you?" I'm like, "Yeah, always." Yeah, yeah. What do you do? <laughs> yeah, what do you do? Just take. He's very low key. He'd probably be person. like, "Oh, hey." But so this is the story of Jack and Janet Smurl. Yes, I'm Christy. I'm Heather, and today we're talking about the Smurl family haunting. And I'm going to preface this by saying we are a family divided on this This is a on tough, this topic. It's a tough episode. Much like this family was divided by their duplex, Heather and I are divided on how we feel about this. So we're going to present both sides of it. Also, they're, the demons, because they're awful and they're demons, did some unsavory things that we'll cover, including mm-hmm. sexually assaulting mm-hmm. two of the family members. So just a heads up, we'll give you a warning if you don't want to listen to that part. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get into this. Let's get into the beginning of of how this all started. First of all, a lot of this had to happened in Pennsylvania near Scranton. Yes. So uh, I love that. Wilkesbury and Scranton <laughs> and the anthracite mines. It made me think of all yeah, this. Yeah. I uh at some point, the Scranton Diocese gets involved, yes. which I just imagined Dwight was in charge of. Like, <laughs> Scranton, what? The electric city. Scranton, what? That's what I just could yeah. I couldn't help but think it when they talk about the anthracite mines. <laughs> I was like, yeah, there are anthracite mines. Oh, did they talk about that in that rap? In the rap, yeah. Oh, that's and hilarious. They always talk about going to the Wilkes-Barre Mall or like, oh, so-and-so's in Wilkes-Barre. The guy in the audiobook kept saying wilkes Bar, and I was like, that's wrong. It's Wilkes-Barre. I've watched The Office, and yeah. that's wrong. That's where I get all my knowledge. Uh-huh. In 1972, Hurricane Agnes wreaked havoc on most of northeastern Pennsylvania. Due to mass flooding, Jack and Janet Smurl were forced to leave their home in Wilkes-Barre and find a new place to live. Jack's parents, John and Mary Smurl, decided to buy a duplex in West Pittson, Pennsylvania. It was decided that Jack, Janet, and their children... Heather and Dawn. Is her name Heather? There's, not only is there a Heather, there's a Shannon. I thought there was Dawn, Kim, Shannon, and Karen. I have Heather, Dawn, Shannon, and Karen. Well, this family is, you can't <laughs> trust them. 
the book this again what was the other thing we were we were talking about oh it's the other the annabelle with the warrens they changed the girl's name in annabelle from donna to dana or yeah. some, diana or something like that in this book they talk about that the kid's name was kim and dawn well why would they just change one of their names i don't maybe she didn't sign off on the book and she's an adult <laughs> i don't know well I'm going to refer to them as Heather because I think it's funnier because it's your name. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the children lived on the left side with their parents, and John and Mary lived on the right. And then a few years later, twins Karen and Shannon would be born and live there, too. How unfortunate to be born into a haunted house. That is unfortunate. There's, you, it's in the birth lottery. Yeah. Built in 1896, the duplex was a fixer-upper and in need of a lot of repairs. The Smurls were a close knit family. Both well, Jack, you'd, you'd have to be close to live next door to your mother uh, and father. They loved it too, but yeah, that's. I think of everybody loves Raymond when she's like, <laughs> <laughs> that this freak show moved in across the, the like, street from me and Jesus set up Christ. camp. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know about that, but th- it worked for them, you know. And they lived happily next door to their in laws. Both Jack and Janet had been raised in extremely religious households and were devout Catholics. They decided to tackle these repairs themselves and enjoyed remodeling their home together. For 18 months, the family enjoyed a worry-free, peaceful life. However, Mm -mm. in January of 1974, bizarre things started to happen that they couldn't explain. A strange stain appeared on a brand new carpet. Jack would clean it, but it would reappear the next day. This happened several times before he finally just threw it out. Do they have a pet? Maybe yeah, they kidding. have a pet, Simon. <laughs> no, they said it's a it was German a, shepherd. They said it was like it's a greasy, like spot. a greasy oil stain. Yeah, because yeah. at first, I mean, I get stains on my rug <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Same spot. <laughs> You're like, really? Again? Sometimes I clean it, and it does come back. Yeah, absolutely. Because. Dogs like to pee in the same place yeah, they after do. they pee on it once. Yeah. So, or pigs. Yeah. When they were talking about this, I was like, oh, okay, maybe. But then they described it as like a like an oily, greasy, like a grease, juicy, grease like, stain. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tools would go missing. Water pipes would break. They'd solder them back together and they'd break again. Yeah. They said that uh, the plum. They had particular issues with the plumbing. Granted, the house was born in eighteen or born. The house was it built. It was born. It was born of a man. In <laughs> it was 18, born in eighteen ninety six. Yeah, it was built in eighteen ninety six. So that's. I mean, even if you like you solder shit together, even if you're a good fixer upper man, it's still old. It's pipes. it's old. Yeah, for sure. Toilets would flush by themselves. Okay, that's a little bit. I think maybe that's just someone being courteous uh, of this world or not. The ghost. <laughs> They're just giving it the courtesy. Flush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unexplained bangs were heard day and night. Sounds See, like my house. Hey. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Seeing as how this was an old property, no one thought much of it at first. They just thought it was like kind of knocking in the walls. Yeah. Or maybe the house settling or just house sounds. You know, when you move into a new house. And someone and just house knocks sounds. on it. <laughs> yeah. However, according to the Smurls, the strange activity soon began to escalate and could no longer be explained away. Kitchen appliances would catch fire. Okay, but same. That's happened yeah. to me. Yeah. Several times. I, ca- I saw a grease fire cooking bacon on a pancake yeah. oh, pan. Yeah, I've, I've had a grease fire too. I just, I just was like, fire, fire, <laughs> fire. I don't know what to do It's in so that jarring because you're like, oh, God, there, there's a fire. It's in my house. And then you just you sort just, of stare at it for yeah, a minute. Yeah, yeah. I also set the toaster action. oven on fire. When I was a kid, I tried to reheat some Applebee's. Uh, ribs. Didn't take the foil off. Didn't take. Yeah. I thought it. I didn't know it was foil. I thought it was paper uh, set right on fire, and yeah. I didn't even get my Applebee's left over. Always done that. Uh, put a fork or a spoon in the microwave. Oh, I've never done that. Ooh, <sighs> scary. It'll wake you up. So their shit's catching on fire. Shit's catching on fire, including the TV. That sucks. One night, Jack's watching TV, and it just burst into flames. I really like the book because they're very descriptive, and they're like Jack loved western films <laughs> and one night he was enjoying a john wayne movie when suddenly the tv a brand new set they'd only had for a few months burst into flames wow maybe it the was... narrator's also really dramatic and does voices that's a good audiobook reader. he does uh lady voices jane will be like he'll be like janet was in the basement i was just folding <laughs> clothes and i was like okay. oh right that's ridiculous that sounds like an improviser trying it's to pretty, play a lady it's pretty rough I'm and like, then he's got this yourself. he's got this ed warren voice and he'll be like 
I was in the house. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I'll do the voices throughout. Don't worry. That's, please. <laughs> is it the author that does it? No, that no, reads no. It's it? Oh, it's a, a different a professional audio book wow. reader. So the TV burst into flames. They'd hear strange voices and screams. God. Cold spots would be felt throughout the house. And there was a terrible, foul smell that seemed to permeate the rooms. Radios would blare loud music, and when someone went to turn them down, they would find they weren't even plugged in. That would freak me out. And I have a lot of Bluetooth speakers, mm-hmm. and I'm always afraid that it's going to come on. And I have an Alexa, and I'm and like for I got new Wi-Fi, and Alexa like out of nowhere, I'd be walking through the room, it would go, "I'm sorry, I didn't hear that." <laughs> and you're like, "That's because I didn't say anything." And, Alexa. and I'm like, "Ghost whisper, in Alexa." <laughs> like, oh god. We have a Google Home, and. Sometimes it'll just do that, too. It just comes on. It'll go, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? I'm like, bitch, I didn't say nothing. Or the other night, uh, one of Ella's toys just kept playing. Mm -mm. And I was like, it was in the closet. It wasn't even, like, in the living or in her room. And I was like, this is probably a ghost. You got to take out the batteries. But then the worry is that if you take the batteries out, it plays again. What if it still plays? it's so much worse. Yeah, I'd rather just think it was a Defective. technical error yeah yeah, yeah. Right. i don't i don't want to know if anything's going no, on oh god oh uh our friend maggie mm-hmm. that recently or not recently she's a year old now but she has a beautiful daughter <laughs> and she said the other night she kept trying to put her down in her crib in her nursery and she would just scream mm. and she finally like got her in the crib and then she started screaming again and she walked in and MJ was just standing up, pointing to a corner of the room, going, <laughs> that, that, that. No. <laughs> I just got chills. Oh, my God. And I was like, do you need me to come over and investigate? Because this is 100% I'll come over. Yeah, <laughs> I'll come over and sit in the room in the dark silence and see if I can feel a yeah, presence. Yeah. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. So ba- they say babies can sense and, and see things that we can't because yeah. they, like, aren't jaded yet like they don't their know brains to... are still open to that exactly. kind of stuff not to like ignore it or whatever so she probably saw a ghost jesus christ yeah that 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 that, that is that from that. a movie yeah that's hard another thing from a movie rocking chairs would just sway back and forth on the front porch as if a ghostly presence was enjoying itself i can explain this using the dick van dyke show which is the greatest <laughs> television show of all time We've referenced it several times i will never not it's a great show it's so good but there's an episode called ghost of a chance and they go to this cabin and it's haunted and the rob is like there's a perfectly good explanation there's a scientific explanation well buddy who's like the kind of comic foil is there with him and the rocking chair starts rocking like the door opens and closes on its own then the rocking chair starts rocking on its own then it just stops then the door opens and then closes again and rob's like well you know a a wind probably blew the door open it kind of blew the rocking chair and then you know the rocking chair stopped and buddy's like well how do you explain that the door opened again and he goes rob goes i don't know the ghost got up and left (laughs) so sounds like in this case the rocking chair starts rocking and the ghost gets up and leaves yeah Yeah. because it is a hundred percent haunted yeah it's sure in rocking chairs if you want to invite a ghost into your home that's the third way get it yeah ouija Ouija boards (laughs) murders and get a rocking chair chair, because they're always creepy especially like old timey rocking chairs an old wooden rocking chair yeah it's just ripe for like it's like late at night and you're going to get a glass of water and then you catch it out of your eye and it's just fucking rocking and And then when you look at it it stops yeah yeah i just scared myself i'm gonna be rocking right god so also the smurls had recently remodeled their bathroom but they soon discovered scratches all over the sink and bathtub that looked like a wild animal had been in there. They said he redid the bathroom sink, brand new porcelain sink, went to bed. Next morning they woke up. They said it looked like somebody, like talons or claws, went to town and just gouged the porcelain. I'd be so pissed. I was going to say, you put all that work in, you'd be like, oh, you motherfucking better be I'd a be demon. Like, Which one of you kids did this shit? Because you're about to be kicked out. You're going to get spanked. Yeah. And the same scratches also appeared on freshly painted woodwork. It's like, stop. The demon does not appreciate good craftsmanship. No. (laughs) He was living in the past, or it, I guess, was living in the past. Probably most haunting of all, Dawn, one of their children, began to see people floating around her room. Mm -mm. Despite this, the family claimed to be happy and continued living in the house. 
Jack had recently been promoted at work, and Jana and the kids were doing well. But sadly, their good fortune would not last for long. Financial difficulties struck for Jack, and Mary suffered a heart attack. To make matters worse, during this time, the paranormal activity intensified. Oh, God. One afternoon, Janet was in her kitchen when she said a black mass, about six feet tall, with no discernible features, materialized before her. Yeah, she said it was a faceless, human-shaped figure with a fluttering black cape behind oh. it, and then it was looked to be made of like rolling black smoke. That's how I that picture she was it. Just, she was just had her head down, and she was ironing, and kind of, you know, like, she, she always had the TV on in the background, and just was kind of mindlessly, I mean, we've all been doing that, you know, when mm-hmm. you're just doing uh, chores, and then she just said she felt a chill, like, oh, shit. And then when she looked up, that uh, was in front of her. And she's just like, I just didn't move. Because, well, yeah. Uh, You'd be so shocked. And then it just whooshed past her through the wall to where the other side mm-hmm. of the duplex. Mm-hmm. Janet ran down to the duplex next door to talk to the mother-in-law. And she had just seen the same figure. She's like, the thing busted through the wall. Yeah. And Janet's like, like, yeah. like the Kool-Aid man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Like, Boom. <laughs> <laughs> oh poor Mary! Can you imagine being an old lady with a heart. It's had a heart condition and a freaking ghost bust no, through your wall. That's how you have another heart attack. Jesus! On another occasion, Janet was in the basement doing laundry. This poor woman is always doing chores. First of all, she has four kids and a husband. Somebody that works. fucking pick up a broom. Seriously, she help her out. Constantly did chores. I will say this incident is the one that like is seared into my mind from the it's first time you read it. Terrifying to me from the first time I read the book. Ooh. Yeah. As she was pulling clothes from the dryer, she heard a voice softly calling her name. Janet. It was soft, female, and eerie. Janet. She stared in the direction from where it was coming and demanded, What do you want? Janet said she felt violated, like someone had infiltrated the house. Then she heard her name quietly whispered again. Janet. Once again, she screamed, What do you want? (laughs) <laughs> then she heard a small, quiet laugh. She ran up the stairs and grabbed her special rosary and prayed for God to save the house. Man. Because children are fucking creepy. We discussed this last week with the black-eyed kids. Do you think it's our kids who are messing with her? They were all at school at this time. I just meant any kid. Oh, even a ghost kid. Yeah, a ghost kid. <laughs> yeah, any type of creepy child voice is always like a creepy thing you don't My high hear. school boyfriend's house, one of the the spirits in it was like the laughter of a little girl. Mm, you and they heard were like, it? Well, I never heard it, but they were like, that's one of the ones you could hear, but they could also hear her playing with like a ball, like a oh, ball hell no. bounce. Hell, or and I did or hear like that. A... I did hear the ball bounce behind me one time I was by myself watching TV and I was like, and I like look, popped up and like, did they ever me. have someone come investigate? Like they what had it a, was? Uh, they had a priest come and the priest was like, yeah, there's like a spirit specifically like in one of the closets and another of the rooms. And he blessed like the house. Did it stop? No. I mean, it always wears off. Oh, wow. Yeah. Also, like, piano keys being played, like, dink, dink, in another room. Oh, God. God. Yeah. All of that is enough to... See, I would have left this house the first sign something was up. The thing about northeastern Pennsylvania, (laughs) and this area in particular, was ravaged by the closures of all these anthracite mines. So it was super impoverished. Oh. So if you could afford to, like, buy a place and then you spend your money trying to fix it up, you're not going to – I mean, you can't yeah. leave. You're kind these of in the demons hole. demons were preying on literally, impo- like, poor people, like mm. socioeconomically disadvantaged people. Just like the government. <laughs> Hot take. I mean, it's true, though. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's Trump's true. a demon. It's true. It's true. 100%. <laughs> Towards the end of 1985 – the unimaginable happened. And here's where we're going to talk about what we gave you a little uh, This also is heads up about at the beginning of the episode. Uh, he went up. This is a little bit different than the book. Oh, OK. The, well, the we'll said. hear both versions of how this went That's down. the other problem is there's there's several different versions of. Well, this. you know, when you're talking demon haunting, everyone's going to have a different take because <laughs> there's only so much. The details are going to get a little skewed. There's only so much like legitimate documentation that you can do with it. So everyone, it's, you know, everyone sees it through their own eyes. Yeah. So Jack claimed that while he was watching a baseball game in the living room, a succubus that had a young girl's body, an old woman's head, and was covered in scales, 
pinned him down, and raped him. And in the book, he had been watching TV and he went upstairs and then was in the bedroom. Okay. Because the when the Warrens come later, they say that the hotbed of demonic activity is the bedroom. Interesting. So either way, he, either did, way, he claimed that he was sexually yeah. attacked. Yeah. He said he that the succubus had open sores with pus running out of them and teeth that were long and vampire-like. Jack was paralyzed while the demon rode him and climaxed several times, all the while smiling down at him. When the succubus was finished, she vanished and left Jack covered in a sticky substance. And while he said he couldn't feel anything at the time, the next day he was very sore. If one thing would, I mean, any thing that I couldn't see or couldn't explain touching me in any way. Mm hmm leave the house yeah and have a priest bless it yeah. or something i just mean, grab this the kids is and go sleep in your car yeah i mean this is super extreme but it's like i mean even seeing a freaking floating object or floating ghost that's thing what i'm saying it literally any of these things i would have been like peace out yeah i'll go live under a bridge yeah before i deal with this i'll black max out my mass credit cards materializing yeah, i'll front max of out me. my credit cards on airbnbs or like at the holiday inn or Hell something yeah. yeah oh man if they'd had airbnbs back then they'd have been fine that they could have rented great. this place out on an airbnb Ooh, people would have paid good money to Probably. stay in this house they yeah that that's a people tourist i mean, attraction yeah to be like oh you could see a ghost or whatever shoot yeah also, can I just say, young girl's body and old woman's head sounds like a real housewife. <laughs> so it does, it does. maybe it was, was Real Housewives of Scranton. I was thinking of um, The Shining, the lady in the bathtub in The Shining. Oh, yeah. Oh, that scene is so scary. It's, she's got the like firm looking boobers, but mm -hmm, her face is all mm -hmm. old. And she's like, <laughs> that's one of those scenes, kind of like the tinkling on the piano or something rocking when he's when Jack Nicholson's walking down the hall and he just sees that the door is open. Yeah. It's like, cause you know, it's kind of like an M night thing. You yeah. know, so it, you can't, what you can't see is scarier than what you can't yeah, see. Yeah. It's the tension, the building of the tension. Yeah. But Oof. hot take, the only M night movie worth a shit is Sixth Sense. Oh yeah. That's actually a really good movie. Oh, it's that movie scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Every movie oh my God, he's yeah. had since sucks ass. I'm like M night. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, none of them are any good. No. Nope, Signs nope. is a pain in the ass. Signs is so dumb. The one where the, the wind village? is doing everything. The who? The wind. Oh, come on. <laughs> I almost walked out of that movie. I can't think of what it's called. With Marky Mark. Oh, yeah. Uh, the village. Oh. She runs away and it's America at the yeah. end. I was yeah. like, go back to your village, lady. I'd rather be burned as a witch than live in and this And those house things game. look like when Ross dress up, dresses up as the Hanukkah. That's right. Armadillo. <laughs> Armadillo on <laughs> friends. Oh, it looks, it's the same thing that looks like that. Oh, man. Well, unfortunately, not long after the incident with Jack, Janet claims that she was also sexually assaulted by the shadowy figure that she saw. Both Jack and Janet said that during the attacks, they heard loud pig-like grunts coming from behind the house and in the walls, which is an apparent sign of intense demonic infestation. Yes. I 100% agree with <laughs> Did that you hear statement. That, that grunts and the, the, the hooves. Yeah. But why? Is, is a pig like a demon? Yeah, a pig is apparently a, like a sign of Satan. Well, I agree. Yeah, I'm not going to argue that. Yeah. Because uh, in the movie... No, that's a goat. Never mind. And uh, the, the witch. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, fuck yeah, that movie's good. That that's movie a goat. scared me a lot. Yeah, Black Phillip. Right. Oh, Black Phillip. That seems like a rude thing to call people. <laughs> Jack and Janet were not the only ones being tormented. One afternoon, a light from the ceiling suddenly fell. It crashed to the ground and shattered into pieces, nearly missing their youngest daughter and killing her. That was so scary. The family's beloved German shepherd, Simon, Poor was family. also a target. They claimed that he was picked up by an unseen force, hurled across the room, and pinned to the wall. And That's just, when I get real mad. I would burn a house down if it yeah. hurt my dog. Yeah. Well, she said, that, first of all, the light from the ceiling fell while Janet was ironing the Dawn or the Heather's communion mm. dress. And later on, the demonologist is like, well... That really Demons pisses them don't off. Like also, religion. pigs. Side note: pigs are considered a sign of the devil because they're seen by Christians as 
and representing sins of the flesh and also like greed and <laughs> gluttony and the, I guess pig, oh. pigs like to fuck. Oh man, I don't know. Petals of virgin. <laughs> well, you do have a little virgin pig, but she is gluttonous. I, I will say that. Um, and then uh, the dog was attacked. Like he got slammed against the wall, and Janet was like, "What the hell?" And she was by herself washing dishes because the poor woman <laughs> she never sleeps. Is always doing chores. There's Everybody always... was like at work or at school. And then she uh, was, like, holding Simon, and then later on he was walking through the kitchen, and he suddenly fell over Aww. and was, like, like um, flinching as if he was being, like, hit or punched <gasps> the same day. Poor oh, baby. Poor I baby. can watch all sorts of things happen in movies, but when it gets to Pets, animals, no. I'm, I'm done. Another day, too, they said they left Simon outside. She, she left Simon outside, locked the door. They did not have a doggy door. And then when she got home, he was inside the house. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Well, obviously, they're going to start looking for help. Well, yeah. I mean, I would. Hell yeah. Terrified by the events that had been taking place, the family contacted the Scranton Roman Catholic Diocese, who said they would consult with experts, but official involvement would probably be unlikely. The Smurls were super religious and Mm -hmm. super involved in the church and in the community, so people, like, loved them. Yeah. They were a very well-liked family. Mm Mm-hmm. The Smurls believe that the diocese sent Father O'Leary to assist. Could there be a more Catholic priest name than Father O'Leary? I was going to say, this seems like a trap. This is when Janet makes the phone call, right? Yeah. Where so, she calls the diocese, and she mm-hmm. talks to Father O'Leary, and he's talking to her and saying, I got you. I'm going to come to the house. Don't worry about it. We'll bless it. It's no big deal. I'll be right over. And then Jack gets home, and Janet said, oh, I talked to Father O'Leary. He's coming. And Jack's like, there is no there Father There is O'Leary. no Father O'Leary. And he checks into it with a friend at the diocese, and they go, yeah, there's nobody here by that yeah. name. We don't know who she was talking to on the phone. So either the demon mm-hmm. is making a prank call, mm-hmm. or she called the wrong number and someone was fucking with her. <laughs> I mean, if you pick up your phone and they go, Father, can you help us with a demon? You'd be like, what's it been uh, doing? Sure, yeah. <laughs> what's it been doing? What's your address? I'll yeah. be right over. So, yes, they were told by other members of the parish that there was no Father O'Leary associated with the church. So Jack and Janet soon came to believe that he was a demon in the disguise of a priest. God. You can't trust anybody. No. Especially a demon. According to the Smurls, they weren't even safe outside of their home. Frustrated that they were not receiving any help from the church and exhausted from being terrorized in their own home, the family set out on a vacation to the Poconos. One evening after building a fire, Jack saw a young woman standing in the bushes. A girl about 14 years old, dressed in a colonial dress with a long blonde hair and a small smile, stood staring at him. Can I just say, if a young girl with blonde hair in a colonial dress, it sounds like Angela Martin from The Office. <laughs> well, they are at Scranton. They're, they're in the Poconos. It was just Angela. And Angela is just like, hmm, judging them yeah, in the forest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, oh. Because hmm. she's like, it's sometimes it's hard to find dresses for large colonial <laughs> yeah, dolls. she shops in the... That's where she shops at American the, Girl. Yeah. While Simon growled, Jack got a flashlight to go investigate. He looked down the road and around the bushes, but found nothing. Later that night, around the fire, they heard a small girl's voice saying, Help me! While Jack stayed with the younger kids, Janet, Don, and their cousin Davy, who was described as a strapping young man Ooh. who was on the wrestling team. How could you not with a name like Davy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they walked around the lake but found nothing. But on their walk back to camp, they passed a small grocery store and saw a trash can violently whipping around in circles. The family decided it was probably best to pack up and leave. On the drive home, Loud vibrations that sounded like waves crashing could be heard in the van. Jack pulled over and they stopped, allowing them to continue on their way. Yeah, they said, too, that Jack was just a lot of stuff happened on the camping trip that they kind of tried to brush off. Like they had tied all the swimsuits up on the line to like let them dry out. And Jack was just standing there having a beer and he just turned and looked and just all of them at the same exact time just went and just Mm. fell on the ground. And he looked at them and they were like tied still. So I was like, oh, maybe they just put them on the line wrong. But apparently they had tied mm. them to the line. And the Mm-mm. demon was like, nope, you yeah. have wetsuits. Feeling like they were at the end of their rope, Jack and Janet contacted world-renowned demonologists and clairvoyant Ed and Lorraine Warren, a.k.a. Heather's godparents. 
power couple, the Jay Z and Beyonce of the spirit world. Uh-oh. Yeah, they said that uh, Janet started getting really like she didn't because aside from doing chores, she didn't have a job, so she would started to go to the local library every mm-hmm. day and started researching demons. And then she found an article. She was trying to contact universities with parapsychology departments, but this was the late seventies, and they were like, "A woman, right? <laughs> go back to a the woman kitchen. being afraid of ghosts. Stop being hysterical. Yes, you're probably on your period." So they all kind of ignored her, but she found an article that mentioned Ed and Lorraine, and so then she called them. Mm. And they were nice to her. Well, good. I'm sure that they're very nice people. In 1986, the Warrens investigated the Smurls' home and concluded that it was possessed by four entities. An elderly woman. They said had dementia and was confused. A violent girl. A melancholic man who had suffered throughout his life. And a demon that ordered them all around. Mm -hmm. This just sounds like a real world. Yeah. (laughs) Four spirits picked to live in a house. This is what happens when things start, stop being polite. Stop getting real scary. Also, this demon is just like, I'm watching a lot of Survivor. He's a real Jonathan. Oh, I'm I on watch- season 12 of Survivor, and Jonathan's a real bossy order them around. Oh, time. I've never watched Survivor. Oh, man. We are, I mean, I think it's on season like 35 now, but mm-hmm. we've started watching him like it's season 10. It's good. Damn, it's, you're making your way through it. It's a. Uh, it's just such an interesting like social experiment and just the dynamics of people's psyche and how and how like interact with each other yeah and just manipulative yeah. and stuff it's, oh yeah everybody trying to get what they want yeah I, makes, w- I would not be good on it i'm too emotional to be good at something <laughs> like that well having the multiple spirits makes me think of the book lincoln and the bardo by george saunders mm. which is set in a basically in a cemetery where all the in, the spirits are like interacting with each other but they don't quite know that they're dead mm-hmm. and so they're confused like when people come to visit graves and like aren't talking to them they get pissed off Aww. so if it's like female spirit has dementia they said lorraine said that the violent girl spirit was like insane and like psychotic and yeah. like really violent and that the man was just like super bummed and sad. there's all different kinds i just guess like so. in life they're you the know? same in death ed warren also concluded that the demon had a strong malicious intent against the family and wanted the investigators to leave. Yeah, they were up in the room, in the master bedroom, and, like, the mirror started to shake, the wall started to shake, and then the drawers, inside the drawers, there was, like, rattling and scratching. And so he started putting, like, holy water all over the place to try to calm it Did down. Did it stop it? Yeah, it stopped it while you put the holy water on it. Gotta get that holy water. Mm-hmm. According to the Warrens, the duplex was a passageway that connected the living and the dead, which is why there was so much activity. It had also been rumored that the ground on which the duplex was built had once been used for satanic rituals. The Warrens tried playing loud religious music and holding group prayers to make the entities leave. When that didn't work, they called in Father Robert F. McKenna to perform an exorcism. Can I just say Robert McKenna? They they described him as, quote, an old school priest. Yeah. He did everything in Latin, and he rejected Vatican II. Yeah, he wasn't... uh, He wasn't... uh, not accepted. He got like kicked out of the church. Recognized yeah. by the church is like, yeah, a legitimate person to perform exorcisms. And my other favorite thing about it was they said he, he performed 50 exorcisms, 20 of which were <laughs> successful. And I was like, those are very bad odds. Yeah, I don't know if you put those odds in something when you're trying to, in your to convince people. I've, to your con- I've conducted over 50 exorcisms. Less than 50% worked out for very us. Very bad odds. Well, this this also got a tick mark and that didn't work. Yeah. Category well, they said he, he he finished the exorcism, and everybody was all happy and crying, and the smell of roses permeated because mm. that's apparently like a very like religious thing, and uh, but it only lasted like three days. Yeah, yeah. And then things quickly went from bad to worse. Karen fell seriously ill and nearly died. Don was also almost raped by the demonic. Presence. It came after her in the shower. It, it like pushed her against when the you're shower wall. Most vulnerable. Don't. I'll never shower again. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't I wasn't planning on it. But (laughs) Janet and Mary had slash marks and bites on their arms, and everyone was depressed. Ed told them that this was oppression, the second stage of a demon possession. It follows the first stage of infestation, then possession and eventually death would be next. So that's the the four stages is infestation, oppression, 
which tries to make you lose your faith. Mm-hmm. And then when you lose your faith, then possession, the demon can embody mm-hmm. one of the family members and then kill them. Yeah. It's a real shitty four pronged attack. This yeah. demon has. Yeah. Yeah. But it seems successful. Well, uh, you know, I mean, it's like a, any MLM. It's going to work for a while and then you're <laughs> you going to lose interest. People. Yeah. yeah. You get more people on. Around this time, the Smurls contacted the media and a book publisher claiming that they thought their situation might improve if the public knew about it. And the only, at this point, people in the church knew about it. That was one of the ways they initially got a priest out who just kind of blessed the house. But Mm -hmm. it's because the church kind of was like, okay, shut the hell up. Well, so they had gone to their, they were telling their fellow uh, parishioners what was going on. And the parishioners were like, just go out there, Father. Like, go out there and bless the house. Then when they went on the vacation to the Poconos, a neighbor was walking by and heard screams. Mm. And one of the big things, aside from the banging in the walls that they would hear, was the flapping of giant bird wings. Oh, God. They would, in like the attic and the upper floors. And the neighbor was like, Yeah, my wife and I were walking by and we heard just what sounded like an enormous flock of birds <sighs> was in their house. And if you tell your neighbor, like, Hey, I'm going on vacation, keep an eye out for like robbers, and you just hear a fucking bunch of birds. Yeah. So he stopped and he's like looking up, and then they heard the most blood curdling scream Ugh. that they said. He said he thought somebody was getting murdered in the house, and his wife freaked out and ran away. He said he stood there, and other neighbors started coming out. So they had some neighbors that were aware of it. Yeah. And a- another neighbor girl basically said, You know, I'll, I could come spend the night in your house, whatever, while Janet was visiting. And when Janet left, the radio blared at that girl. She had a door open so on her. So not even at their house. Not even th- so. Then the, and then the, the girl called. It and was told, just being neighborly. Yeah, I was just saying the girl called Janet and said never come over again. I was like, <laughs> well, that's kind of rude. But yeah, so it's a few people had kind of seen it. So then they're thinking, okay, well, when we told our fellow parishioners we had the priest come, so maybe if we tell the public, somebody else will more people can, can help because the Warrens would go out there like every once in, like they would go back and forth and make visits. They tried three different exorcisms mm-hmm. and it just kept on coming back, kept on coming back. Yeah. So Jack and Janet went on a Philadelphia talk show called People Are Talking, which I really like the name of Yeah, that. I tried to look up. I couldn't find their episode, but I found some other episodes. Oh, and it I is, bet they're great. So, is it really grinds my gears quality? It's like so late 80s, early yeah, 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really Oh, good. is there a giant plant? There's huge plants on, <laughs> on either the side set. of the stage, and the guy has dark hair and like the, like tinted aviator oh, glasses and exactly a mustache. What, and a mustache is exactly what it put in like a light colored leisure suit yeah oh yeah yeah that's exactly what i imagine light brown suit orange tie yeah Mm-hmm. jack bay i think is his name oh nice according to the family the demon did not like this and retaliated the demon is not trying to go viral no though. he is not trying to get in the spotlight after this the demon caused janet to levitate and hurled her against a wall and one night, it appeared as a monstrous beast to Jack, taking on the form of a pig standing on two legs, again with the pig. On one especially terrifying night, while Janet was sleeping, a human hand came up through the mattress and grabbed her by the back of the neck. That's some straight up Freddy Krueger shit. Hell yeah, that is. That That's one of the, me. that. every time I take a bath, I think of that scene. Ugh. When she's in the bathtub and Freddy's claw reaches up in between her legs. No. Ugh. Also, they also said one night Jack was, uh, before they went on the talk show, they were asleep and then he opened his eyes and at the end of the bed was two women in colonial dresses, one about 40. What's these colonial Dude, dresses? Well, shit was going down in Pennsylvania in the colonial era. <laughs> That's true. There's a lot of like history, history from yeah. back then. And then it's two women. One was about 40. 41 was about 20 and then a guy with a mustache and the two women were kind of whispering to each other and then when they saw that jack was like awake the man got like down in jack's face and was like you'll pay for this oh. and the women were wagging their fingers back and forth and their jack was too paralyzed to say anything and the, they started kind of laughing to each other and they're like you'll pay for this oh the god fuck? desperate for help jack and janet decided to give an interview to a local newspaper Soon after, their home became a tourist attraction for amateur ghost hunters and those wanting to catch a glimpse of the horror. And according to the Haunted Book, two hilarious teenagers who walked by with a boombox loudly playing the Ghostbusters uh, theme. Which that's kind of fun, though. Very funny. <laughs> Didn't also a coven of witches show yes, up? Yes, they and wanted up. to come in. They were like, "We want to use the. We want to do some uh, spells in here." And they're like, "No." If a coven of witches shows up on your doorstep, let them let in. Let them in. They know what they're doing. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. There's gonna you're gonna have a great story at the very least, and they'll help you. The press coverage worked, and soon the diocese got involved. Father McKenna also came back to perform a third exorcism. All right, so now he's up to fifty three. <laughs> yeah. Twenty one of which Still are successful. Not working. <laughs> 
After this one, for three months, things were quiet, and the family believed they were finally free of the evil presence. Then, around Christmas 1986, Jack was watching Johnny Carson one night when he saw the black cloaked figure appear before him. It appeared to be summoning him. Jack feared the third stage was beginning, possession. As the demon laughed and the floors trembled, Jack held up his rosary and loudly prayed for the demon to leave them be. Around this time, and I think it's really sweet, mm -hmm. John Smurl. The father. The father Jack of and Jack. Jack's so father. Grandpa Smurl. <laughs> Some Grandpa Smurl, yeah. Grandpa Smurl gets a crucifix that he had been, I guess, hiding away somewhere. What Aww, a dick. Yeah. Uh, that had, it's like a relic from the old world that had a, a thread allegedly from Jesus's robe in it. Oh, wow. And gave it to them to like protect the family. And Jack was like, no, because it was on their side of the house. And I guess not as bad things were happening on their side. Mm -hmm. So he was holding out on them all this time. Yeah. Why didn't you pr Your granddaughter is getting this molested in the shower. And you're not, yeah. Give it to them. Come on. So he gives it to him and he's like, well, you know, if anything happens to me and your mom, like we're old and we've lived our lives and we just want to take care, you know, want to take care of y'all. Mm -hmm. Um, so he was at least, I was like, but he was kind of holding out. Too, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Shortly before the book that they had been working on called The Haunted, which is the one Heather read, which detailed the family's terrifying experiences. Shortly before this went to press, the family moved out of the duplex for good. In 1988, the Catholic Church came in and performed a fourth exorcism which supposedly cleared the house of all evil entities. Well, I'm really glad that y'all finally came after we moved out. <laughs> they assholes. say that in these situations, if it's not church sanctioned, that it doesn't work a lot of the time. Ooh. So the other ones, because that father wasn't recognized by the Vatican. There were, he was an off-brand priest. Yeah. He, <laughs> he was an equate great value yes, brand priest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few months later, a new couple moved into the house and said they had no problems at all. In 1991, the movie The Haunted was released. Have you seen it? I have not. I haven't either, but it's it the seems same. Scary. It's the same as the book, from what I okay. understand. So there's the side of what may have happened in Pennsylvania in the mid 80s to the Smurls. But maybe there's another side. Maybe this was all a hoax. No. This is where. This we is are where we're divided. Very divided. <laughs> While the Smurls and the Warrens claim all of these events are true, many believe that this was nothing more than a hoax. The, by the way, what I'm about to say, I love that this thing exists. Yeah. The Committee for the Scientific Investigation of Claims of the Paranormal. That's a very long name. They they have since shortened it just to the acronym CSI. Okay. Now <laughs> you're just trying. You're They're just trying, trying to jump on that bandwagon. You're trying to yeah. sound cool. We got CSI in here. Yeah. Well, they offered to investigate because of the attention the case had garnered. CSI Chairman Paul Kurtz sent two teams to West Pitson to investigate. When they arrived at the duplex, the Warrens refused to let them enter. You don't want to have a bunch of strangers coming around fondling in your house. Maybe. Or maybe they were like, they're going to get to the bottom of no, this. I don't agree with that. <laughs> Neither of the people on the team were clairvoyants or demonologists. Maybe so not. I don't know who they were. There is also a whole subplot of the book where uh, a, a young man is coming up as a demonologist and works on this case. And it's, <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> but it's real? Yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean, it's just what's happening alongside. Also, I forgot to mention, Jack had issues at work, and one of his coworkers wrote a statement for the book named Maria Ramos, and the very white male narrator was like, the statement of oh, Maria God. Ramos. And I was like, what am I listening to? This is why to? we don't do accents, guy. Dude, <laughs> I was like, you do no, that. Could, you could even just do the female voice. You're doing. No, it was pretty rude. You don't do that. Um, yeah, and his, but his Ed Warren voice is always like, we wouldn't let him in because we didn't it know they like was Sounds like he's gonna... from the Bronx. That, exactly. I'm like, I don't think that Ed Warren talked like that. But no. yeah, he'd be like, we got to go upstairs because the best part of the yeah, like he's is... a mob boss. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what he sounds like. He sounds like a Tony Soprano-like character. That's so great. He's like, they come knocking on the door he's like you're not getting in here i just don't i can't see myself letting you in i don't want you mucking up what this we got guy going. had fun recording that he I'll really too much fun yeah well however even though the warns wouldn't let them in 
the Smurls did give permission to one of the teams to investigate the haunting claims. The team conducted extensive phone interviews with the family, neighbors, and reporters working on the case. Their findings led to Kurtz writing, A haunting in West Pitson? Not a ghost of a chance. How crazy is that? What? That it was the same episode you Come referenced. On. Which was published in the 1986-87 edition of Skeptical Inquirer. Okay. Again, so glad this exists. They're not going to ever say that it was real. It's called the Skeptical Inquirer. Well, but they also... They're going to come so in and what piss they, all over So what everything. they wanted to happen and what they didn't agree with was that the Warrens didn't do any type of scientific investigation to prove this, which with the Committee for the Scientific Investigation of Claims of the Paranormal... Good God, CSI. They, the CSI, they always want it to be... Have some scientific proof. And it's kind of... Like with a tape recorder? Um, or an EKG? Maybe, yeah. Instead of just, like, feelings or um, opinions, I guess. I guess it's like our psychic fair experience, which you can oh, listen to our mini-sode. <laughs> which we have a lot to say about it. But I also think it's interesting that they're using science to explain ghost. Okay. Because well, usually yeah. you wouldn't have science and well, the, it's CSI the paranormal. Christy. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what's his name? The redhead on CSI? I don't remember. The one that always takes his glasses oh, off. Oh, David Crusoe. David Crusoe. <laughs> David Crusoe needs to get when involved. When you say CSI, I think of the real and original CSI, CSI Las Vegas. The was only... he not on that one? No, he's on CSI Miami. Oh. CSI Las Vegas is the one true CSI. That was the best one, With William too. Peterson, who I met in college Ooh. and is so nice and very hot in real life. Which one was... Oh, I, I know which one He's the main guy. Yeah, he's yeah, Grissom. Yeah. God, Grissom is sexy. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. You're not wrong. How'd you meet him? He uh, was a Chicago, he's an actor in Chicago, oh, and he cool. was friends with the director of our theater program, and he came in and talked to all of us and was nice and hung out with us afterwards. Very cool. Yeah, Gil Grissom, nice guy. Well, in attempting to defend his refusal to allow the CSI team to investigate, Ed Warren called a press conference. I got a lot of stuff to say to you people. <laughs> Coming in my house, debunking my theories. <laughs> Ed claimed he had tapes of terrifying sounds and a videotape of the dark form in the duplex. Ask, ask, ask me where my tapes are. <laughs> well, they did, and apparently he couldn't remember the name of the TV company to which he gave them. There's a lot of TV channels. <laughs> NBC, ABC, CBS. How am I supposed to remember? I gotta remember all these ghost names. I can't remember all these TV company names. There's four ghosts. There's four TV stations. <laughs> Who's to say where the tapes went? That's true. Or... Maybe they went to a paranormal TV station that maybe. wasn't even in our realm. One of the ghosts, maybe they ate him. We yeah. don't know. He also said that the Catholic Church had the evidence, but the Catholic Church says they don't. That's what they want Which you to gonna, believe. Who are you going to believe, a demonologist or a priest? That's, that's a man. The priest and a demonologist walk into a bar. <laughs> exactly. The, pre the demonologist says, where's my evidence? And the priest says, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that joke, that's you it. guys. That's the only, that's, there's no punchline. <laughs> One of the reasons Kurtz did not believe the family's claims was because of Jack's health. I think this is a really good explanation for what might have been going on. Well, I think the number one explanation is there was a demon infestation. <laughs> Could this have been the number two explanation? Maybe. Okay. So three years before the alleged haunting began, Jack had brain surgery to relieve water on the brain. And this could have caused delusions. Allentown psychologist Robert Gordon thought that the family possibly suffered from mass hysteria, similar to that which happened during the Salem witch hunts and trials. He said shared tension might cause this, and common symptoms could involve delusions or hallucinations. But when Kurt asked the Smurls to undergo comprehensive psychological and physiological exams, they refused. Well, I mean, do you want to go under a psychological exam at the behest of a stranger who already thinks you're crazy? Because <laughs> I sure don't. That's a good point. The Smurls reported a foul stench that would permeate the house and attributed this to the demon infestation. However, neighbors had complained to town officials for years about foul stenches originating from a sewer pipe near the Smurls' home. There was also intermittent settling of homes in the area, due to layers of underground mines, which could have caused the chairs to rock and other disturbances. Many thought that the family made up these claims for notoriety and financial gain. 
Within days of the story about the alleged haunting making national news, a witness allegedly saw Jack negotiating with Scranton businessman Ralph Loma. How great of a name is that? Mm-hmm. Head of the Star Group, the a, Holly- star. <laughs> a Hollywood production company. We'll make you a star, kid. Jack initially denied this, but Loma confirmed he tried to get exclusive rights to the story about the case. In November, St. Martin's Press announced that it signed a book contract with the Smurls. This also came not too long after all the Amityville stuff. Correct. So a lot of people said, well, they probably saw how that family got a got some fame and notoriety and book deals and stuff from that and mm-hmm. then spun this into the same own. same vein yes so what do we think i think we know what we think well heather is very pro demon and i'm pro I was, not demon i wouldn't say i'm a pro demon <laughs> kind of person but i will say i think that the family did experience paranormal ongoings Having seen a ghost myself. I want to hear about when you saw a ghost. I thought I told you already. Did I tell that story on the podcast? Have you? Was this in your childhood home? No, no, no. There was a, There is a ghost in my childhood home. But in my uh, high school boyfriend's house, we were asleep on the floor. And his family was like, you're not allowed to leave the room after 3 a.m. They told this to you They told this to everybody in the house. It was a... It was a uh, House wide rule that you cannot leave the room after any room that you're in. Any room, you can't go from the bedroom to the bathroom. Which from his bedroom to the bathroom was you could hop like it was three or four feet, but you still had to go out in the hallway to get there. Sure. And they were like, "You will not leave this room after three a.m. at all." Period. And so if I had to go to the bathroom, and we'd be like up late because we're teenagers. Wait, was the reasoning just a rule, or because of the a ghost? Because of the ghost, they come out at the the witching hour, which is three a.m. Oh shit! And so. If it was like 2.45, he'd be like, hey, if you have to go to the bathroom, you need to go now because you can't leave the house after 3 a.m. and Or leave the room after 3 a.m. And they had had orbs fly out of the closet or whatever. And then uh, one night I was laying on the ground and he was asleep. His little brother was asleep, I think, between us. And he was the high school boyfriend. We were all on the ground because they had bunk beds. So the little brother would have like nightmares and would want us to like sleep mm-hmm. with him. And so I was closest to the door and I was like asleep and I wo- opened my eyes. And it was after 3 a.m. And I opened my eyes, and there was a guy standing in the doorway, like, leaning against the door. But I so y'all like, had the door open? We had the door open. And I remember thinking, because his, his stepdad was maybe five eight, five nine, And I remember thinking, like, man, he seems so much taller when I'm laying on the ground. And then I was like, no, his this guy's head is, like, close to the, like, top of the door. And he had, a, like, a top hat kind of thing on. And I'm like. It was Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> oh, my God. But this, this guy had, like, you a have mustache. A with him. Yeah, it was, that's what Abraham Lincoln came to. He was like, <laughs> you will be a lawyer someday. <laughs> Work hard, Heather McKinney. And I was like, no. So I was laying there, and I, like, looked up. And who knows? Maybe I was dreaming. Maybe it was a hallucination. But it seemed very. Or maybe it was a ghost. It seemed very real. And especially because they had seen other stuff at the time. And um, so I looked, and I was like, that's weird. And I shut my eyes, and when I opened it, he was walking away. <gasps> And I was like, that's weird. But he did he, you saw his face? Did he yeah. have features? Yeah, it was like an old man, not an old man face, maybe like in his 40s or 50s. And he had like facial hair, like a mustache and a goatee kind of thing. And he looked old timey. He was wearing like a like black. Like a Western person? Yeah, he was wearing like a settler 1800s kind of. He was wearing Dang. like a black suit with a white shirt and like a, you know, not a necktie, but maybe like a bolo tie. Mm-hmm. Anyway, and so he turned around and walked off. And I was like, that's weird. And to be fair, their house was like near some old mesquite, like settled grass that was like mm. it, that one or two houses are still there of like the blah 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 family homestead and it's yeah. like a historical house and uh the next morning i was just like that was weird you know you guys like I, somebody was standing in the doorway last night and they're like who and i was like oh it was just like a guy and he looked like he had like a top hat on and they all just got <gasps> like quiet and had I was they like, seen the same one well i was like what and the mom's like to the little sister she's like go get the picture go get the picture. So the little sister goes in another room and comes back with this Polaroid and it's their friend, their neighbor was standing in the doorway and then over the neighbor's shoulder, the Polaroid was like messed up, like, like green, like it had been like deformed. Double exposed. Yeah. And in that, that green deformity in the background was the shape of the guy I had seen in the doorway. And I was like, 
No, so that's the, wait, him. the neighbor took the picture into their house? The na- well, no, the neighbor was standing in the same doorway. So it was the same view I would have seen inside the room. Oh. Neighbor is standing outside the room. And somebody had taken the picture from inside of the room to the neighbor yeah, standing yeah, yeah. there. And over the neighbor's shoulder out in the hallway Dang. was like the thing I had seen. And then they were like, well, you know, we don't want to sound weird, but like we hear like little girl laughter. We hear like balls. Oh, so this was when you first heard about the. Yeah. And they're like, stuff? we heard like balls bouncing sometimes. And then that guy will like walk around the hallways. Like they had orbs fly out of the closet. And they're like, you know, we had like a priest come and bless us or whatever. Did they ever think about moving? No, again, it's mesquite. What do you think? You're rich. You can just go and move wherever you want. I'm trying Nobody to think. Nobody wants to buy a house in mesquite, but it's a freaking haunted one. The housing market is so bad right now. I'm trying to imagine if all of a sudden our house started having all this paranormal activity, we might have to stay there. Yeah. Because while we could sell our house for mm-hmm. a, a pretty penny, we can't buy a house. That's true. Because a new one. it's so expensive to buy right it's now. It's so expensive. So right yeah. now is a good time for a... Uh, a uh, demon to try to spook someone because they can't know where else to go. That's, that's true. Well, that's you heard both sides. You can draw your own conclusions and see who you, if you're Team Heather or Team Christy on this one. I would say I don't. I, Jack Smurl was a beloved member of the community before and after the haunting. Mm-hmm. People loved him. He was the secretary of the West Pittston Lions Club. He was uh, very involved in the local church both before and after the haunting. He was like flipping burgers at the church bazaar. People loved him. He protected his kids. He worked, you know, he stayed at his job at the gum factory, I think, is where he <laughs> worked, which is like a weird thing. Um, it's he, weird. There's a gum factory. He passed away in 2017 at mm-hmm. the age of 75 of a, after a battle with diabetes. But the, his kids were like, he did, he did everything he could to protect us. Like, he didn't want the fame. Like, when people would come to the house, they didn't want that. He would, like, really try to protect the kids, like... They were super, super, um, I think that, and like neighbor kids said, one of the neighbor kids wrote her a letter when her dad, when Karen wrote Karen, the, one of the twins, a letter when Jack died that said, as a teenager, I did not have parents that supported me and no one gave me a ride to summer league and no one was proud of me, but your dad, he was our biggest fan and he always made sure we had a ride and your parents were always the absolute best to me. So they were like, oh, I think they were good parents. I think he was suffering from some mental stuff, maybe from the surgery or just mental health in general. And then it manifested into this mass hysteria where I think, what did we talk about before? Oh, the Dyatlov pass where like if one person's freaking out, even if there's like a bunch of people around that are sane, it's hard to like stay sane, combat the, the hysteria and the manicness of the person that is experiencing that. So you kind of get sucked into it. Well, they, I was going to say, Karen Smurl has now become a paranormal investigator. So, oh. I mean, it's one of those questions, though, of, like, just because you believe something, does does that mean that it happened? Sure. You know, the whole entire family could be 100%, con- like, not just like, well, dad was delusional and we had to all kind of pretend. Or like, ooh, we're going to all pretend for fame and fortune. I don't think, I think the whole idea that they made it all up is stupid. Because they didn't, like I said, they didn't end up super rich. They had to move to another shitty little pennsylvania town it's not like they were like well now we're gonna move up to philadelphia and be mm-hmm. rich they were just like well this house is haunted so Pulling i guess a we'll... fresh prince of bel-air yeah they're not they're not they're not moving up to bel-air so they're <laughs> you know it, i don't think that they did it for like oh super like rich reasons i think they genuinely like, believed that it happened whether it really did or didn't sure that mean that kind of remains to be sure. seen well that's that man yeah they're uh we got some shout outs. They're famous though. Uh once again, we got a shout out our good Instagram friend at Shop Pixel and Ink. She's so nice and she posted on her own page encouraging people to listen to also, us. Also, her prints are gorgeous. I oh yeah, order she them. does really great stuff them. and I'm hoping that she does some some stuff for us cuz she does a lot for um my favorite murder. Yeah, I love it. I yeah. love her style. So check her out. She's got, it's at shop.pixel, P-I-X-E-L, and ink. She's got a lot of great stuff. Also, Matt, again from Australia. Oh, our, always. Our Aussie friend. Uh, just always He's trying to get me a Tom Hiddleston date. Yeah, so. he's. Thank you. So uh, we want to remind everyone, please tweet, tweet and tag John Cusack. And Tom Middleston, is it Middleston? Hiddleston. Hiddleston. Get my future, my future <laughs> Heather last Hiddleston name right. has a really nice ring Heather to Hiddleston it. Heather Hiddleston sounds amazing. Uh, <laughs> Heather Cusack. Also mm, fine. I also mean, good, fine. but I like Heather Hiddleston better. Heather Hiddleston Or you know what? Better. 
You can keep your last name. That's if you true. Want. That's what we I do. We live in America. I can do <laughs> I, what I want. I, I did not change my name, so that's no. perfectly fine. Um, yeah, so we, we definitely want to make sure that the, my celebrity dream dates know that I exist. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would like to shout out the Super Gamecast 64 podcast for letting me be a guest. I was a guest mm-hmm. uh, last week talking about um, the labor law as it relates to video game studios. Oh, interesting. Which was actually really fun. What and episode is that in case people want to listen I think it's to episode it. 106 nice. of Super Gamescast 64. So shout out to... Austin, Trey, and Connor, the hosts who had me on, they were very lovely, That's and they let great. me plug our show. Oh, So if you like video games, tune There's in. There's probably some crossover between our our listeners and theirs. Yeah, and they um, they do all like kind of video game news and stuff, and they had me on because a video game studio did a mass layoff of its employees and like didn't pay them mm. severance and didn't give them warning, so they were asking me about the lawsuit and oh. if it has a stance, you know, if it has a chance or whatever. Interesting. We get into some hot political takes, too. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm always down for those. Also, always down for some live entertainment. That's right. If you it's are coming up so soon. It's so soon. If you're going to be in Dallas on October 26th at 1130 p.m. at Dallas Comedy House in Deep Ellum, 3025 Main Street, get your tickets at DallasComedyHouse.com or on our website. You can get a link. Mm-hmm. And we would love and to it's meet free. you. It's free. Just, just say you're coming so they know... Probably which theater to put us in is what it boils down to. Also, speaking of Shop Pixel and Ink, when she plugged us on her page, one of her friends replied and said, oh, I'm going to subscribe right now. And then she commented later and was like, oh, my God, they're... They're having a live show right down the street from me at the end of the month. Come on, girl. So she's coming. Shout out to you. Come yeah, meet us in person. That's great. And we'll have swag and some uh, merch and stuff there. Yes. And also we'll have a little pre party uh, at one of the local bars. So yes. we'll, to be announced. On and our we're going to have a giveaway. Yes. That we have been collecting things for this giveaway for months. We'll have a gift, gift basket. It's pretty. I, I think it's gift basket worthy at this point. <laughs> There's some pretty fun things in it. Will there be chocolate turtles in it? Oh, of course. Hell yeah. But they'll be haunted. <laughs> <laughs> haunted chocolate, chocolate ghost. Oh, yes. Man. Well, just like Shop Pixel and Ink did and does, if you like what we're doing, please tell your friends the best thing you can do to help us grow is not only like, review, and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts, but to recommend us to someone who you think might like us. That's how we can grow our audience base and continue to do what we love doing. It means so much to us, and you'll get a shout-out, too. Always. We're big fans of shout-outs. Yes, and you can also follow us on social media. Where can they find us, Heather? At Sinisterhood Pod on Instagram and Twitter, and then like us on Facebook at Sinisterhood, or go to Sinisterhood.com, and there's a link to all of the things. Yes, and you then you can also check out our fancy new website. It also has all of our episodes there and soon to have episode notes i've written them all out i just have to type them oh <laughs> so nice show notes will come up for every episode so if we mention like a book or a movie yeah. reference or a tv show reference i'll put i've been putting uh links and stuff to the actual episodes that's awesome so you know what we're referencing that's great and you can also read our bios yes and a little bit about the show too yeah where can they find you? I'm on Instagram at Heather vs the world, and you can like me on Twitter at MCK versus the world, and you can find Christy Wallace on Instagram at Christy M Wallace, and on Twitter at Christy or GTFO. And we also mentioned earlier we're going to be doing some mini sods. The same day this episode comes out, our first mini sod will come out. And we're going to be talking about the Dallas Psychic Fair that we attended today. We each had individual readings. And we went gallery. to a gallery reading, which was very interesting. And we just have a lot of fun stuff to talk about. You'll love it. Yes. So, as always, the devil rules the airwaves. Keep it creepy. Sinister. Home.